just so happy to see you and glad that you chose our church to come to this morning Amen. and worship with us. Don't let this be the last time because we'll never be closed down. We may be late coming in, but we will the church the whole while. And good service. citizens, not only in the county, but also in the city and her legendary work of working with so many in high places to make their work even better, but at the same right. time, you high place yourself. Right. And that's why we want to thank God for you. Let's thank God for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. all of you. Grateful to see our forever first lady, Lady Green. Amen. 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 Good to see you deacons. And with that, I do believe I've got a couple of announcements. Let me do that, then we're going to turn it over to our Easter speeches. Now, in reference to the announcements, I want to get these out of the way so we can get to a spirit of, of why you really came here today. It's not always the announcements that you receive, but the inspiration that you garner from those who are pouring more into the worship experience. And so thank you to all the families and especially to the children that participated in yesterday's Easter egg extravaganza. It was such a blessing to have been here, to have been a part of the cleanup with some of the men and a couple of the sisters that were here. And right around the time things were beginning to get started, we were wondering if it was going to be all right and folks were going to show. We had more people than we had fish. And that is a good problem to have. And it was good to see so by the Lord gave us the beauty of the space and time of a beautiful day to be able to enjoy one another, to be able to fellowship and to relax indoors, outdoors. It was just a blessing. And so we thank God for each of you. And we appreciate the Sunday School Department who took that idea from our business meeting and just ran with it. That was a great success, and we're grateful to God for each of you and your efforts. Also, an official new holiday on Wednesday, April the 13th. Oh, as we mentioned, Mother Talena Saxton was honored by District 5 Commissioner Natalie Hall, Fulton County Board of Commissioners, for her tireless work and dedication to her community. And so, yes, it is Talena Saxton Day on April 13th here in the county. So mark your calendars and bow down 
to the only one we know that got our own day. Amen. And so that is such a high blessing. That is actually, I, I think there might be a few others, but tell you what, that's the newest one, and we're gonna celebrate that. I tell you what, how about there's a dance team? Are you interested in joining the Greater New Life dance team? Do you desire to bring God to men, men to God who dance? And if so, please contact Sister Phyllis Alexander. Sister Mimi Brown numbers are listed there. If you want to be a part of the choir, they do have rehearsal. They're trying to spin it up and get it going to where everybody's in unison again. So I would say honestly, please come on out and lend and lend your voices in the celebration of the Lord. Three W's. We are still uh, uh, celebrating the fact that we are able to come into this house. And we're celebrating the fact, as Mother Saxon said, we've never been closed. But then again, we've never been crazy either. And we've been open with some sense. So I'm still going to ask, if you would, please utilize masks, occupy some distance and some space, uh, wash your hands. However, yesterday I realized maybe these words are slipping away. But you do the due diligence to do your part right, amen. Because we had we had a good time on yesterday, amen. amen. And, uh, and uh, I'm just grateful for how we were just able to enjoy. So let nothing get in the way of the joy of this day and the joy of this fellowship. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. I do believe there's a presentation by the young folks. Good morning, Greater New Life. Good morning. First, give an honor to God, who's the head of my life. The minister of the Gospels, First Lady, trustees, members, and friends. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Joshua Stargell. I've been asked to MC the uh, Easter ceremony for today, orchestrated by the Dr. Jacqueline Stargell, the head of our youth ministry. And so, firstly, we will have Jackson as he comes. Let us walk. Her. Good morning, Greater New Life. Good morning. I am Peter, one of Jesus' disciples. I thought I would be true to him unto death. When he told of his betrayal and that we had fallen away, I said, not me, Lord, I'll be true to my last breath. We all went to a place called Gethsemane, where Jesus asked us to sit with him while he prayed. But we fell asleep and left him all alone. He could not depend on any of us, I'm afraid. Just as we were about to leave that garden place, the betrayer came and he greeted Jesus with a kiss. The soldiers all surrounded him. And we knew immediately that something was amiss. They took our Lord off to the courtyard of the high priest. I followed at a distance and sat with the guards at the fire. Someone asked if I knew Jesus. I answered, no, but I was alive. I denied him three times on that night so cold. Then the rooster crowed, and I knew what I had done. My heart was so filled with guilt and shame, I broke down and cried. I just wanted to run. How could I? Love Jesus, be so unfaithful to him. Was my love so shallow that I let fear take control? I know he died for my sins and all the world. He later gave me the charge, feed my sheep. That was my role. He loves everyone and saves those who repent. Your sin and your guilt can all be washed away. If you only give it to Jesus Christ, just bow your head down, confess, and then pray. Amen. So, Yes, Easter speeches have gotten a lot more robust since I was a young child. <laughs> my first one was, I was about five years old, and mine was, Jesus rose on Easter day. <laughs> Second one was, he got up. I remember that one very, 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 very well. Secondly, we will have two speeches, I do believe, in tandem, and they will be read. By Morgan and Michaela. By Morgan and Michaela. Amen. Let's welcome them as they come. I am Pilate, 
governor and judge. Jesus was brought before you, accused by elders and priests, but no answer gave you. I asked what he had to say regarding the charges that were made. He made no reply at all. He did not seem afraid. As was the custom of the feast, I could release any prisoner I chose. The crowd asked for Barabbas, one of the most notorious of foes. While I sat on my judge's seat, my wife sent me a message. She said Jesus was innocent. I think she thought he should be set free. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the crowd that day. They asked for Barabbas, please. And Jesus should pay. <laughs> they asked me to crucify him, and there was such an uproar. I said, I am innocent of his blood. Then I walked out of the door. My soldiers beat Jesus and prepared him to die. The crowd won his blood. They mocked him with a loud cry. They spat on him and struck him again and again. They mocked him. They made him a cross and carried it and he was forced to walk. Over his head was written, the King of Jews. To those who believed, it was really such news. Happy Easter. <laughs> Let's celebrate them again. Next, we will have a speech read by Kirsten Davis. Okay, so Kate. Hey. So welcome, Ratchet Thomas. My name is Mary Magdalene, and Jesus saved my life. He freed me from the demons which has caused me so much strife. I followed Jesus' ministries and even stood beneath the cross. I mourn with the others who are suffering such a great loss. I tried to comfort Mary, his mother, Salome, and the other Mary too. We stood there alone. Only one of Jesus' disciples came to watch his death up close. We saw them offer vinegar and a drug-inducing dose, but Jesus would not take it. Even though he was in pain, he knew that by his death, sinners would have everything to gain. On the first day of the week, I went to Jesus' tomb with several other women the burial preparations to resume. I got there first and saw that the tomb was rolled back. I could not believe such an amazing fact. I thought someone had stolen the body of my Lord. I jumped to conclusions the obvious is normal. I ran and told the disciples about what I had found, then went back to have a look around. I saw the angels first who asked me whom I saw. Then I saw our king, my sins he surely bought. <laughs> Very good, very good. Let's, let's celebrate her again. That was very good. From memory, from memory. And I guess we will have Jasmine Jackson. Let's welcome her as she comes. She's reading. My name is Mary, the mother of Jesus and I. I was there that fateful day. I watched my son die. I knew in my heart that the prophecy must come true. From the day he was born, I watched as my son grew. He became a man who performed miracles and taught everyone who would listen the sick and lame they brought. But that wasn't the reason God sent his only son. He gave him to the world so that souls could be one. It nearly broke my heart to watch my son's pain. I had to remind myself that his death was the world's gain. His cruel fate on that cross was a very necessary thing. He's the savior of the world, our Lord and our King. Next we will have 
have Bryce Johnson reciting his Easter speech. Let's welcome him as he comes. to our education system, the levels of advancement. I don't remember reading that good when I was your age, young man, I don't. I might not read that well now, but we, we still have hills to climb. How many of you know we'll still get there? Soon enough, soon enough. And so as we conclude, I would like to conclude with a prayer. We all bow our heads and close our eyes. Father God, we thank you. We praise you for being the wonderful God that you are. For you are a way maker, a miracle worker, a promise keeper, a wonderful counselor. You are he who got up on this day, Father God, all those years ago, with all power in your hands, and we thank you. We praise you for the glory and the wonderful bounty that you bestowed upon us. For if it had not been what you've done all those years ago on that faithful cross, Father God, we would not be here. Amen. For you said in your word, if I be lifted up, I draw all men unto me. You weren't talking about just in praise or in prayer or in practice. You're talking about being lifted up on that cross, Father God. Amen. And we are being drawn to you right now. Father God, you said in your word, if one or more gather in your name, you be felt in the presence of Father God. So we are coming to you now on bended knee as our hearts open, ushering toward the throne of grace, hastening to your throne, Father God, thanking you for all your many wonderful blessings, asking you to continue to bless us and be with us. There are those of us that are mourning, Father God. There are those in us who are in need of prayer, Father God. Those of us who are in need of the blood that you shed on your cross, Father God. Those of us in need of that peace and that joy. For you said, the last supper is my peace that I give you. The peace I leave you. My, my, my. Thank you for it, Father God. For you are always with us. And yea, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil if you are with us. You will never leave us or forsake us. Father God, we thank you for that. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for forgiving us for your sin on the cross. Father, forgive them for you, not what they do. Not just those who crucified him. Not just pilots, not just the soldiers, but for all of them. So we thank you in advance. Amen. Amen. Amen.
space and time to be able to enjoy one another together. I just also have this mindset that you can worship the Lord, you can enjoy Him together, but you don't always have to be in here to do so. The doors are going to be open. Outside is a beautiful day. I just want us to be able to share the fellowship with one another. So I don't want you to think I'm trying to get into a rush. At the same time, I ain't trying to keep you here long. You know what they say in the club, we ain't here for time before a good time. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We're here for a long time before a good time. And it fits. And it's just good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. 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 So choir sang to the glory of God. We're grateful for these opportunities to worship and we do not take them.
ever praise you. Oh, 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 oh Lamb of God. For you came and you touched me. Touch me with your heel.
rehearsals, trying to get back into a rhythm uh, that allows them to know where the other one's coming from, because it's a blended scenario of dependence when it comes to singing in choirs. But at the same time, we're just grateful for them. We're grateful for them giving them the talents, looking like uh, in their Easter festive colors today. I just noticed the pastels all around. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hey, man, that's they've got to give for the choir. Amen. Amen. Thank you, musicians, for, for, for being there through it all and for always being accommodable to the need of the church. At the same time, I didn't want them to have to have to uh, miss out on this moment just to be with those they came with. This is Easter Sunday. We want to celebrate the Lord together. Amen. A very quick word, but it's not to be given lightly nor cheaply. There's value in this word. There's strength in this word. There is a new life for somebody in this word. I want to look very quickly at the word of God where it says in Psalm 117. Matter of fact, if you get a chance, take a look at it now. Psalm 117. I'm grateful for this fellowship and for this time. And, and at the same time, uh, I'm just glad to see each and every one of you. I want to thank you again, Brother Jackson, for hooking up that fish on yesterday. Amen. 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 There were some folks who came by the church after service. Reverend Pearson and his wife dropped by and a few other folks. And... Because we sat outside and just fellowshiped. I don't know why these uh, brothers were sitting around so long. I don't, they act like they didn't want to go home. Praise the Lord. But, uh, uh, and I wouldn't know that, but I was with them too. So let me hush my mouth. Amen. But we're just fellowshipping. It hadn't happened in a while. It was just good to be with one another. And just enjoying just that space that we occupy that takes us beyond just being members in Christ, but being brothers and sisters in fellowship and loving each other like family. But I want to thank you again for that. So Psalm 117. Psalm 117. If you have it, let us stand together. You will find that of the chapters in the God and in the God's Word that this is one of the uh, shortest, but it has weight that speaks to the moment. Psalm 117. Oh, praise the Lord, all ye nations. Praise him, all ye people. For his merciful kindness is great toward us, and the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Praise ye the Lord. I want to talk for just a few minutes from the idea of praise him. Praise him. We thank you, O God, for this moment. We ask, Master, give us clarity in speech. Give us boldness, dear Lord, that speaks through this empty vessel. And dear Lord, let not my frailties get in the way. For we come to hear a word, we come to worship you, magnify you, we come to be re-energized, charged, and we come to be made ready for the battle that is at hand. Now, dear Lord, let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength, my redeemer, and my friend, this I do ask in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you and we praise you. Let every heart simply say, Amen. Amen. Praise Him. Praise Him. For it is during this particular season that three of the major religions collide in their high holy day periods. It is during this particular season that in Islam, that our brothers and sisters who might believe from a different perspective are now celebrating a month called Ramadan, where they do not eat, but they fast during the day, spend more time in their holy book, the Holy Quran, and then at sundown, and when the day has come to a close, they fellowship with one another during the Ramadan period with their family members, commemorate the goodness of God unto them. During the same period, you'll find that the Jewish uh, faith has that testament of the Pentecost, where the Passover lamb, well, the lamb's blood was sprayed over the doorpost in the Old Testament and the death angel marched over the Jews' homes and their children were not killed while 
Pharaoh and his allies suffered the ignominious death of not serving the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The Passover, also known as the Pentecost. This is that season. And it is also during the season where, during this, the Easter time, where during the resurrection, where we celebrate what Jesus had done. Also noted that here today, we're in that moment just to be able to celebrate that Yes, nothing that was done in the life of Jesus was by accident. This particular text, though it's short, it gives us brevity to be able to share these words quickly. But I want you to feast on the notion that at the end of the day, regardless of how things have transpired, from a religious perspective, it ought to change you in such a way that you at some point learn to wake up with an attitude of appreciation. Amen. The Reverend Dr. Robert Schuler that would say with an attitude of gratitude. Amen. It's the idea of saying that I'm going to praise him. The world might get crazy. Foolish things might go on. We still deal with the foolishness in this world, but yet at the end of the day, I'm still going to praise the Lord. Beginning of the day, I'm going to praise the Lord and everywhere in between, I am still going to praise the Lord. Yeah. Here in our text, praising him is implicit and even during this period as we put it all together, I just want to make this brief this morning. This is my Easter gift to each of you. And so I share with you just three points and then I'm through. The first thing my friends is be grateful. Be grateful. I know that many of us have taken hits in our family dynamics where people are not going to be at the Easter table that once were there. Yeah. And it hurts to the core. But be grateful for the time that you had with those special ones. Yeah. Here in our church over the last two years we were speaking of this the other day. How many folks we funeralized since the end of 2019 with Sister Davenport and then it seemed like we every few months were sending somebody home on over to the other side. And you know what? As much as it hurts with every passing, we're also grateful for the time that we spent together. Amen. Be grateful for the fact that God gave you this new day. Is it perfect? No, it is not. Are you perfect? Don't even fool yourself. But the fact is, you ain't as half bad as you used to be. Because most of y'all know there once was a day when you were what? Toe up? From the, oh, you know it. Your pastor stands in that same spot like a long way to go. But when I think about the goodness of God, I can only say thank you. Thank you. Praising him should be implicit in how we operate. But also, it's this gratefulness and praise. It's not just the words that we use that seem to be holy and sound real good. It's that gratefulness and that attitude that even if I ain't saying nothing, I'm just glad to be alive today. Ain't even about my words, not even about my actions. But I'm grateful for what God has done and is doing in the lives of his people. The second thing, my friends, if you want to grab hold to what the psalm writer says, is to be faithful. Trusting in God in spite of. Being faithful. To know that God is able to do ever anything that you need done. Being faithful that says, I will never doubt God. I will never walk away from God. And even if I get shady in my faith, I'm not going to abandon God because I am faithful enough to know that my God will never leave me. Amen. There are those moments in our lives when we go through the difficulties. We look at the news and we are sometimes made to feel, God, where are you? The foolishness overseas. God, where are you? When we look at what happens here, even in our own neighborhood, God, where are you? When we look still here again at executions by folks in badges, God, where are you? And here again, once again, I don't rail on anybody because the most folks who are taking out folks are us in our own neighborhood. And the sad fact is, why we want to throw stones and turn cities over because of something that happens maybe once every once in a while, the reality is we've become so tolerant 
in our own pain. But we got to be faithful. Faithful to know that God is still on the throne. Faithful to know that God will still hold you through your darkest moments. Faithful to know that God is still there even when the rain falls. He'll provide your sunshine soon enough. My friends, be grateful. And then also be faithful. But then the other thing is, be committed. You want to have this spirit of praise that the psalm writer talks about. You got to have this commitment, if you will. You got to be like some of the mothers of the church who said I've been on the battlefield for a long time, yeah. fighting to do right by the Lord, yeah. and I ain't tired yet. It's that commitment that simply says the troubles are real, the frustrations are real, but I'm going to be committed. I'm going to be grateful. I'm going to be faithful. And I'm going to be committed to know every day that the Lord still does hear and answer prayer. Yes. And so I got enough right there, enough to praise him. Yes. But then I kick around on this Easter season. Mm. And I look around and I realize that the tomb was empty this morning. Mm. They hung him there on Friday. Yes. For the last three nights he hung out there in the grave. Yes. And I know they had a good time. I know they were already in hell, but that's all right. Yeah. Heaven came their way. Yeah. I don't really know how it turned out in the end. I asked Jesus about that on the other side. But I think somebody might have caught a break because heaven came their way. We're here in a position where even hell at that moment probably praised the Lord. And here, my friends, while we still with clear minds and open lungs don't do it enough, we can praise the Lord. Praise Him with your actions. Praise Him with your thoughts. Praise Him with the life that you live. We are here to praise the Lord. We have the evidence of the empty tomb this morning. And somebody said, as I was listening to Sunday school, even as we read it, and even as Mother said, as they have done in that depiction, that Jesus was in a tomb the night before, but you woke up on the early Sunday morning. Yes. Somebody rolled the stone away. All right. We don't know who might have done it. They discussed it in Sunday school, but guess what? That's why the scriptures only say it wasn't a matter of men. It wasn't even a matter of angels. Jesus rolled the stone away. Yes. And we have the empty evidence of saying, yes, it's empty. But oh, what power does come. Because he's alive now and forevermore. So we are here, my friends, to praise the Lord. We are here, my friends, because he still opens blinded eyes, because he still forgives us of our sins, because he still heals our empty bodies, because he still causes to lame the walk. He still causes the sinner to get saved. And there is a personal Savior, and his name is Jesus, who is alive now and forevermore. And because he lives, I can face tomorrow. The difference between us and my Muslim friends and brothers, the difference between us and my Jewish friends and brothers, sisters of all, is that we have a risen Savior that died so that we could be saved, who paid a price so that salvation is available to us. He did it, y'all. And if you believe it, come on and give your life to the Lord here today. Come on, praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Yeah. Think about the goodness of the Lord.
for you. And we appreciate you. I have to ask, I have to. I'm in an odd space right now. I'm in an odd space. I thank God for our musicians. I thank God for it. Who else has to do the come on, come on, come on. Come on, yeah, baby, come on. I don't want to miss nobody. not at, at all anything that is planned, but I've always told him with his white shoes that if he came by, he was one of the musicians. Are you still working over at the college? No, I'm pastor. Okay, good. You're pastor now, but he used to be the head of, of, uh, of the music. Yeah, the chapel over there at Morehouse. And the boy has a gift, but see, being he's a preacher, I'm trying to tell him in advance, the sermon's given, we're trying to leave. <laughs> but at the same time, I'm also saying, I told him before, if you show up, you at least got to sing a song. Amen. Right. Amen. What you got? Okay, can y'all can let y'all work all that out? Is that all right to touch? All right. Amen, amen. Got your white suit on. <laughs> Looking like Easter. Yeah. Or, you know you mess around with stuff with me. I mean, fool the whip over your last couple. Go ahead.
bet your fingers working on the keyboard. <laughs> Lord, I thank God for our musicians and for the celebration of us working together. Thank you, Pastor. I appreciate you, man. At the same time, understand and go home. Reach out. Reach out. Sunday morning, as in always, we ought to have a spirit of praising you, Lord, for great things thou hast done. To the all-wise and mighty God, be power and glory henceforth, now and forevermore. Let us all sing one time. I pray for you. You pray for me. We came here to worship. We go forth to serve. Happy Easter. God bless you.